Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchasu, the mighty mix spammer and what you see before your very own eyes is Endless Space and the Echoes of the Endless Adon, which is the second expansion to this amazing game, a free expansion I might add, which the devs promised us but we were not entitled to it, so big props to them. I thought this would be a nice way to start this playthrough, just by thanking Amplitude Studios for this amazing game that I'm loving a lot. So, in my last video I asked which faction shall I play next, because I have created a bunch of new custom factions and there was this little contest on which one shall I pick. And the winner were the Jellicators of Lynn. No, I'm just kidding. Those guys actually only got a single vote, as did the Chantry, they also got only a single vote, and the Sujian faction also a single vote. By the way, I'm also counting all the votes I got, meaning that I count the votes on my YouTube channel, aka on the video itself. I count the votes on Endless Space Studios, not Studios forums because I posted a thread there as well and also on private messages and also I count my personal and game uh, opinion on that. So there is also, well, personally I did not really cast a vote because I wasn't sure which one shall, uh, shall I pick. So those three factions only got a single vote, all of your corporation got two, excuse me, three vote, no, two vote. I had two or three votes and Siafu got five, so I guess those are the clear winner. And you definitely did want me to play an evil faction, as it seems. So, there we go. There can be no good without evil, no light without darkness. I did what I had to do to preserve the balance. I have no idea what went with my voice right there, but I guess we'll go with that. So, as you can clearly see, and I already talked about this, but I might as well do it again. Siafu, the faction that is really an evil faction to its very core, they and the only way for them to survive is to conquer and dominate other races as quickly as possible because they have the Craver's affinity. They are very, very powerful early game and possibly mid game, late game, they are dead. So I have to win by then. It's going to be very extraordinary even difficult because I will be playing on the endless difficulty setting, the highest difficulty setting there is, and I'll do my best to succeed. Let us have a quick look at advanced game settings such as random events that I definitely want to leave on. I might actually go for average amount of exploitation, exploration events. Usually I go for few, because having too many of them is actually sometimes kind of ridiculous. You can have bajillion, okay, maybe like 60 deaths per turn income, but in early game, the first few turns, it is actually huge. And this is kind of a little bit break, game breaking. So I like to put it on few, the exploration events, but average will do for a playthrough, I guess. I do want to showcase as many of them as possible, that's why I did increase it. Ambient Galaxy map? Yes, please, it's awesome. No need for Galaxy for Seed for events, I have no idea if it matters or not. Part difficulty? Insane, please. If we go all out, then let's go all out. All victory options enabled because you know I don't need them. And that's about it. In terms of Galaxy Generation, I really want to go for Spyro 4. It is a little bit interesting. I was thinking about Spyro 2, but it does the shape of uh, Spyro 2 seems a little bit boring because you usually have only access to two empires and no other until you either defeat one of those two neighboring empires or unlock the ability to travel without the need of a link between individual systems, which is kind of late game. Maybe mid game, but still, you, you get my point. So, Spiral 4 is the shape that we're going for. And size, we're gonna go for huge. It is going, actually, going for a huge size of Galaxy might not be too good for me because I do need to win as soon as possible. But, oh well, let's go for it. It is going to be a devastatingly awesome run. A very power gamey one as well. Age normal. Uh, just FYI, I believe that young uh, Galaxy Age makes stars. Makes systems usually easier to colonize and all oh, makes them a little bit more difficult, but I might be wrong. I did not figure this out too well just yet. In terms of more advanced settings, system balancing average, I could go for weak or no balance. In fact, I think this might be a little bit kind of funny, but then again, I really want to win, so I'm not gonna go for it. Galaxy Descent in medium, or we are already playing on a huge. Galaxy, so let's not go too far. Solar connectivity normal is good. Number of constellations few is good. This is the default amount of constellations, which will mean that we're gonna get nine constellations in this particular galaxy shape. Wormholes average. Should I go for low? I like playing on low wormholes. It's just my personal setting, but I do like it. And I'm gonna go for it, why not? 
Constellation distance on average, I like this one as well. Plants persistent. Now, this is a tricky one because it might either set you up for the future or make you DD dead. But since I do want to win, as I said, I'm gonna go for normal. Let's try and make it as balanced as possible. I mean, if I make another run, and I probably will, then I'll go for random just for the kicks. Planet size no more is decent and resources. Last time I played with low resources, and I have to tell you, I loved it because there's so much more finesse to this game when you play on low resources. You have to struggle to get the ones you need. You have to go into diplomatic relationships to get this one little resource that you desperately need to have abundance of it, stuff like that. Unfortunately, it will be difficult for me because I am at eternal war. I cannot go have the diplomatic relationships with anybody. So, yeah, it's gonna be very challenging, but let's do this anyway. As for the other factions I'm going to fight against, well, I'll just pick every single other faction there is, except for the Cravers, because I am already playing as a sort of Cravers. So, so as we have the other green, Blue is of course Sophos, Hisho I think should be suited for Orange, Horatio for Teal, I guess this is called Teal, this color, Pink, um, I'm not sure actually, who should I pick for Pink, I'll think about it, Pilgrims for Yellow, because they f I feel like they're Yellow, and Shredden aka United Empire for Red, so who is left, there should be one single faction left, oh, the Amoeba. Well, actually, the color is kind of suited to the faction, I believe, so we're good to go. Let's start the game. And how long has it been? Oh, wow. Seven minutes, almost eight minutes already. I sh I'm not sure if this is too long, but to be quite honest, there are some things that, do, that I do need to explain early on, so I might as well do this as early as possible. Now, because I'm playing a custom faction, we are not going to see an intro video that you always get when you start the game as an original faction, which, and those videos are pretty cool, they kind of introduce you to who you play as, and I do love watching them. But since, as I said, we're playing as custom faction, we're not gonna get any introductory video. There's the Echoes of the Endless announcement thingy that tells you that we're playing the second add-on. You can read it if you like, kind of cool read it, to be quite honest. Yeah, well, nothing special, but I like it. <laughs> And let's have a quick look at the heroes we got. This one is amazing, he's gonna be our fleet admiral, because he's both a pilot and a commander, the best composition I could dream of. Then again, adventurers are pretty sick as well. Still, this is a really great composition, I love it, and I'm gonna stick with this guy as my commander. This guy might be a potential governor, because he's got an administrator, very cool, cool. Cool ability to have early on later in the game as well. And the last guy is a pilot and administrator, same as before, except he's a human, so I'm not gonna recruit him because I hate humans. As you probably know by now if you watched any of my previous videos. So, my. Oh, that's interesting. My home is Irea. Now, because I played a lot of hegemony, hegemony, whatever you wanna call it, it does ring some memories, a lot of memories. <laughs> anyway, my home system, as you can see, it says it is improved, which means that because I am a craver and I have craver affinity, my fits production, aka food, industry, science and dust, is greatly increased and its output is really, really huge. Also, I start on the medium average, which gives me a variance bonus to my dust gain, but I am really pathetic when it comes to science, and uh, yeah, you do get a slight approval decrease because Arids are not the optimal place to live in. Also, the problem is I start with Hagels. Now, this is my faction trait that I start with this particular anomaly. It basically means that my planet has flesh in Hagels, or in this case, metal eating, because I am a robot faction, but it doesn't really matter, it doesn't. So my people will really hate me for living on this planet, but what is important is that I do gain a lot of food from it as well. Also, I do love the way this planet looks with the hair guards. It's, mm, it's amazing. Anyway, my first exploitation is going to be evolved soils, because I do need to get as much food as possible. You may notice that it says it's going to take 999 turns to, for it to complete. This is because my people are on strike. And they are on strike because of hair guards, which decreases my approval, and medium arid, which also does this a little bit. So how about we decrease the tax rate and make my people happy again? Or at least content. Though I guess we could try losing a bit of dust to make them happy, but... 
To be quite honest, I would love to stack up on as much dust I could possibly imagine early on, so we're gonna go for content with plus 5 dust gain, it seems good enough for me. And now we're gonna only have to wait 3 turns before Evolved Soyuz arrives, and also my people are going to replicate, procreate, or whatever you wanna call it, in 4 turns, which is really, really nice. Now, we do start with two fleets, as usual. One is a Hive ship, I'm not sure if I should rename it that or not, and one is a Forager. I, you know what, I think I'll rename all of this because I'm this kind of person, so first of all, my home system is going to be, well, how would a race that kills and destroys everything call a system it lives in? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like that. So we live in a, so we live in a trash can, that's classy, I guess. <laughs> okay, trash can being my home system, and as for my fleet. Well, I am going to remove patrol because I would love to create one from scratch later on and for now I know for a fact I'm not going to create any fighting ships just yet, there's no need for them to be created at all. And yeah, I'm just gonna remove all of those guys and add them by myself. So first of all, a colonization ship. I always go for engines on those guys just to allow them to travel a little bit faster and colonize other planets quicker which is even more important when you play as the craver like faction when you do need to expand really really rapidly i don't go for anything else usually and how am i going to call this uh, ship the doom bringer that sounds about right because it brings more of my people and my people are doom more or less there is some kind of depth behind it i just couldn't think of anything better. And as for my scout, let's say Kufulu. Is that how you spell Kufulu? I have no idea. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna call it Eye of Kufulu. Eye of Kufulu. It's a reference to Terraria. I might, of course, spell it wrong, but who really cares? Well, you probably do, but fortunately for me, I do not. I do not really need to get long grid sensors. I mean, extra vision is nice, but it's not nice enough to justify additional industry costs. Even though it is kind of extraordinarily low and pathetic, I don't want to spend too much money on it, so I'll just go with the engines so that I can pump even more of those scouts. First of all, thing I'm going to do is scout up the nearest system, which also has this little icon over here, which means that I can get into some kind of exploration event when I reach it, and the event is the best technology I'm on. All those available for research is discovered. Wow! This would have been utterly amazing if not for the fact that this is also my first turn, which means I did not have a lot of technologies at all. However, it does mean that I already have so Xenobiolo... Uh, so, Xenobiology, that was kind of fiddly, but I'll go with that. Which is kind of decent, it's an upgrade that I always go for first anyway, so it's kind of nice to have. It basically increases my food production, which is crucial early on. Now, where do I want to send this fleet afterwards? And let's have a quick look at the craft system. Okay, so it has two lavas, a large, uh, excuse me, a medium gas methane, and tundra in the Arctic. Well, this is going to be a decent system later on, because it will provide me with quite a decent amount of industry, mostly because of the lavas and the tundra. And methane. Yeah, there will be a lot of industry to be made in this system. However, right now, it's way beyond my reach. So let's send my scaling ship over there to see what kind of event I can have over here. As for my reproductor ship, reproduction ship. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually not going to send him anywhere, because there is quite a big chance that in the system that I would try to discover, there would be nothing of use, okay? No planet that I could possibly colonize, which happens quite a lot. So I'll go with the safe route and just increase the population on the planet I already own, on my home planet, Trash Can 1. And I get great things to have some beginnings, which actually does not fit the what just happened at all, but it doesn't really matter now, does it? I get to research a little bit later. Now, I'm still going to increase my population in three turns, which is good. You have to check that after you do this kind of trick, because it is possible that your population would actually decrease in a single turn after boosting the population on your planet. This happens because... Yeah, you ha the more population you have, the more food you eat. It's not like in games like Civilization where the more, uh, it doesn't matter how much food you have. If you have enough to be on a plus population creation, I would say, then you are... I'm not explaining this well out, or am I? Well, basically, the more population you have, the more food you 
eat and you can't just compensate it by having more population, it doesn't work like that, it's not a civilization game. I did not explain this well at all, I am aware, I'm sorry, I'm bad at explaining stuff. Now, free test to anyway future plants is ready. This is because my home system really does not have a lot of science production at all. But unfortunately, I'll have to deal with it. And that's about it for the first time. We can proceed to the next one. Stand by for my orders or something. And actually, we should take a look how beautiful this galaxy looks like. Um, I've seen better. I mean, there's this little horned thing over there. I have no idea what this is. Maybe some kind of other galaxy way away further in the distance or something. But it is kind of nice touch. There's also this cloud of ionic storms over there, which looks nice. Those are just one of the many parts of the new ambience galaxy that was added with the Echoes of the Endless. Also, it is good to know that I am actually on the very edge of the of one of the arms of the galaxy, which means that I can probably safely explore those systems and only I will have access to them, which is very nice. I like it when I am back to the wall or something. Okay, this is not a lot. I just gained five dust and that's about it. A very small boost, but it's still a boost nevertheless. So I'm going to take it and Hido actually has a planet that I can colonize. It's a tiny terrain, so I cannot treat a lot of people on it. But the system itself is... Eh, I would say decent, but it has a lot of problems. I mean, I stand is a negative anomaly. It does boost my science, but it also increases this increases disapproval. Mountain Springs is positive. Castle Syndrome is really negative, and Acid Rain. I guess you can figure this out, right? So, a potentially good system if I get upgrades that allow me to remove the negative anomalies, which it will not happen for a while. So I'm not going to expand there just yet. Next turn, I'll finish alien graftings, which is going to be very nice. And in third turn, my population will actually max out, which means that I should already prepare a new Doombringer to send out to a different region of the, of the galaxy. It is going to take five turns, so I should start the production as soon as possible. And there's no way for me to speed it up as well, unfortunately. It makes me think maybe I should not have gone for alien grafting and instead try to go for some kind of other upgrades, for example, either colonial exchange to give myself more dust, or industrial zones to increase my uh, my industry. Unfortunately, I made a different decision, so it is a little bit late now to change it. However, what I can do is hire a hero to boost my planet's industry production. So I am going to do this. H Prime, welcome to the uh, to the team, and let's put you on this system. He, this guy should really boost my production and food by quite a lot. In the early game it is actually, well, not really that much, but you are going to see the difference sooner rather than later. For now, let us end the turn, and nothing whatsoever is actually going to happen, because it's just turn number three. Still, we are going to continue moving with our scout. We, oh! Hello there, Amoebas. This is bad. This means that Amoebas are very close by, possibly even in this system, this protostar, which is not good, let me tell you that. I was hoping to have a little bit more time to grow before I can, uh, before I'm actually forced to engage in not some friendly relationships, relationship with other races. Unfortunately, it does not seem to be the case, so I have to just do what I have and try to make it as good as possible. Yet again, my English, definitely not so great. Anyway, what I'm going to do is make sure I can colonize more planets. I'm not sure which one I should go for, but I already know that there are Tundras nearby. So it is a safe bet to go for Xenobotany that will allow me to colonize Tundras. Just in case there are no other easily colonizable planets nearby. Let's end the turn. Drink a little bit of water. I still don't have my juice back, unfortunately. Anyway, Fusion Plants is ready. It is just a scout, an Amoeba scout, but unfortunately he's here already, which means, yet again, that Amoebas are really close by, and Fajitas, or Fajitas as I like to call it, system is also here. And the reward I got is plus 10 happiness on system. Which system? My home system or on Fi system? I would like to know. Um, no, on Fi system. And that actually... I don't care about it at all, because I'm not at the system just yet. That said, it does have minion Tundra that I will colonize sooner rather than later, so it is going to be beneficial for me. Now, I have a 
choice now. Shall I go to this protostar and see if there is the Amoeba homeworld right there, which is possible, or should I go for this exploration event? You know what? I'm gonna go for the exploration event because those can really set you up for the future and on endless difficulty level, I need all the help I can get. I really, really do. Okay, is there anything that requires my immediate attention? Can I boost the tax rate? Yes, I can, by just a little bit, but still I can do this nevertheless, which is very, very good. I need the money. This would allow me to buy out my improvements much faster than I would usually be able to produce them with my crappy industry. At least for now. In the future, my industry is going to be quite beastly, especially with my local spoils. You know, the Aquarius Affinity thingy that allows you to eat planets. But for now, it is the early game, so it doesn't matter. Yes, I know I encountered the Amoeba Empire. I do not care because I can't possibly like them. And they cannot possibly like me. We are just gonna kill each other as soon as humanly possible. So let us keep moving to this system. We are very close by and we are going to capture it very, very soon. At least hopefully. Now there is one more thing I should probably tell you about the difficulty. I mean, the difficulty mostly affects the AIs giving different types of bonus. Bonus I, bonuses, bonuses, that's right, bonuses is the correct way to say it. But it also affects me a little bit by increasing the disapproval I get from either overpopulated systems or overexpanding on my empire. And yes, this is the end of the arm of the galaxy, which is very nice. This means that if I capture those three systems, nobody else will be able to get into those two systems which will create a safe backyard to my faction I need it, even though I also do need to expand as quickly as po I possibly can. Plus 20 approval on system for 5 tens. I don't care because there's no way I expand here as quickly. Then again, mm, medium jungle is amazing, but it does have hostile fauna, so <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be as amazing as it usually is, and on Faiz I get medium tundra, which is not so great, but in the future I can get, actually, Baron is really difficult to colonize. Still, I need to colonize planets as soon as possible because I need to rush this game. I need to rush as hard as I possibly can and try to win this game as soon as possible. Then again, there is Titanium over here and it does increase my industry by quite a bit. Mm, yeah, let's go for it. I'll go for Titanium. I should reach this planet in a single move? Is that even possible? No, I think it's a display bag, unfortunately. But even if it takes me just two turns, I'll deal with it. So anyway, while this is going on, let me see. Okay, Xenobotany is here. Is there any other type of planet that I could colonize? Yes, there's Arid. It has high gravity, which makes it mostly useless planet to colonize early on, but still, it might be a good idea to uh, make to allow myself to colonize Arids. Then again, I also would love to have a little bit more research, so I'm gonna go for that, and only then I'll go for Arid Epigenetics. Now that I have this queued up, I can safely just end the turn, I believe, checking if my... what do you call it? Yeah, what do you call it? Um, my mind is failing me. Tax rate! Yeah, it is written right here, yet my eyes fail to help me. Oh, it happens. It is, however, positive. I still have positive dust scanner, which is nice, and it also means I can hire another hero. Now, I have a choice here. I could hire this guy to allow my future next system to have more food and industry production, which is probably the wise thing to do. But on the other hand, I would love to start leveling up my commander as soon as possible, because I will be in a lot of battles and wars. And by just assigning him to a fleet and letting him stay at the fleet, he will already gain experience. So I'm gonna hire this guy and put him in charge of my scouting ship. Just so he can earn a little bit of experience each turn. I believe he just earns uh, one point of XP each turn, but even then, after 10 turns, he will have a level up, which is still some better than nothing, right? Sorry, I had to silence myself for a moment there, and we can proceed to the next turn. I don't know about you, but... I am full of hopes, and at the same time, I'm a little bit scared. Okay, Circini is a really pathetic system. Tiny Desert with Mineral Pool. Great! <laughs> oh, it is very difficult to have a system any worse than that. I mean, seriously. If it was like Tiny Asteroids with Mineral Pool, then this would be worse, of course, but it's, it would take a lot of trying for the Galaxy Generator to make a system this bad. And anyway, actually, it looks like it will take my Doombreaker even longer than I expected it to take uh, to get to reach the 
Pixie's system, which is mildly annoying, but I'll have to deal with it. I made the decision already, and there is no coming back. What I do know I need to do is make sure that my secondary Doomraker is on its way. Now, I could change the queue to make it created faster. However, having heavy asset of refineries will boost my industry gain by a lot. And just because of this, I'm going to make sure that this is the upgrade I get at the the first, because then I'll be able to make it on my Doom bringers even faster, which is very very important. As my my as my as I might add, wow, I'm really failing English this night. Then again, it is late at night, so I guess I have the right to do so. But then again, this is my first video of a rather long series. At least I expect it to be long. I hope it will be long, otherwise it will mean that I got completely crucified by my enemies. But still. I should try a little bit harder, so I promise to do so. I'm also trying to speak a little bit more slowly than usual, I hope you appreciate it, because I know it has been an issue for some of you people. Some uh, some other fans, then again, do love me speaking really, really fast, but I do believe it is important that you can understand what I say. So I try to control my hyperactiveness, I would say. So let's end the tent, because there is nothing whatsoever I could possibly do in here. My heavy acid refineries have finished up, which means that I have even more industry than I had before. Very, very good indeed. And I can finally colonize the Pixie system. It has cost a phone number, but then again, it is a jungle, so I should not care too much about it. Which, shall I go for food production or shall I go for industry? It's a tough call, to be honest, but I think I'll go for food just for now and then I'll switch it up into industry production after I already am like halfway to maxing out on those two planets combined together. Now, I cannot do really anything else in the system just now because it is going to take forever to even get alien graphing going on, but that's okay. I also have titanium 70, which is very important to allow me to make rockets, which is which are pretty deadly early on because AI yeah, usually have some troubles getting them, getting rocket defense early on. Then again, some factions already start with it, so it's not a big issue at all. Now, my people are, for whatever reason, excited and happy, which makes me happy because it means that I can increase my tax rate even higher. And yes, while making having people happy and ecstatic does mean you have increased industry, science, and food production, which is great. But in the early game, I really believe you need dust a little bit more. You never know what might happen. A random event might absolutely rip you apart if you have not enough dust. Or you might really, really want it to speed up just one cheap but crucial upgrade on some of, one of your systems. And then, yeah, you'll definitely need this extra dust. So that's why I went for dust right there. I always try to make my people as unhappy without them being really unhappy as possible. That wasn't a really logical thing to say, <laughs> there was no connection in there, in the synthesis, but I don't care. Let's go for the rector to increase my labor, which increases my food and industry production by just a little bit, but this will also give me access to Master of Propaganda, which will increase my happiness, allowing me to get even more taxes. Oh yes, I'm an evil person and I love it. I love it a lot. Okay, what shall I go for next? What kind of upgrade calls to me? Colonize Arctic. It might be a decent. I, it might be a decent idea because my home planet is medium, and it doesn't have a lot of population thingies on it, which means that I cannot really. It stagnates very quickly. That's what I wanted to say. So being able to also colonize on this Arctic might be beneficial in the long run. So you know what? I think I'm gonna go for it. Also, it will increase the speed of my ships, which is. Really, really nice and neat. I do love to have my ships as fast as humanly possible. Can I increase the tax rate without my people going unhappy? No, I cannot. Oh well, I'll deal with that. Also, another reason why why I want more dust is to have this hero. Even though I said I do not like humans, he's still a hero who's going to boost my food and industry production, which is important. Let's end the turn. Have another sip of water. Mm. And I'm trying to figure out how long this video is. I mean, I know that the first video of a playthrough always gets the most... <gasps> no! You didn't! 
That was a colonization ship from the amoebas, and they already captured the system so very close to my systems. And they already have this system as well, this, and this isn't even the home system. OMG, they're expanding like crazy. And they also have, yeah, of course, they got really great anomalies over here as well. That's wonderful. I think I know where this is going, and I can tell you that it's not going to go well, not at all. I would love to create a powerful fleet to just dominate the amoebas, but unfortunately, I still do not have the capabilities to do so just yet. I mean, I will go for sust uh, sustainable farms, just so that I can get more people on this large Arctic as quickly as possible, but even with max population on this system, it's going to be maybe not enough. I'm really afraid of what is about to happen. Now, shall I go to Kran and colonize this medium tundra of polar tempests? Well, it would hurt me a lot, but then again, I do not want amoebas to colonize the system. No, I do not. Then again, Fayas is more important, and in the long run, it would be more beneficial. <sighs> That's a tough call, but I'll go for Fayas. Or Fayas, as I like to call it. So let's do this, and let's colonize. Colonize as much as I possibly can, and let's set the system for, you guessed it, iron graphing. You do need to have a lot of food, and as you can see, because I have loads of dust, I could speed this up. So instead of 8 turns, it would only take me a single turn, and I am sorry. I should probably set this to offline. Thank you. So, I lost my t the track of thought, I don't remember what I wanted to say, but whatever. I was probably talking about speeding things up, but I'm not gonna do so just because I do want to be able to hire this hero immediately, and I'm still 40 dust short to do that. But that's not a big problem, I'll get there eventually. Hmm. I really do want to get another Doombringer though. So you know what, I'm gonna get him first because my system is about to stagnate in the next turn. So I'll use this occasion as to get yet another Doombringer and make sure that the system is never stagnated. Because stagnation, as the name suggests, su suggests is never good. Now then. As we wait for the next turn, and yes, I know that the first few turns of Endless Space might not be too exciting, but they are very interesting, and you know what, you also have... Oh, pirates, hi there, that's bad. But what I wanted to say is, you also... You really, if you own Endless Space, try this game out with a friend in multiplayer. You're gonna love it! I'm playing this with Gainslayer because Fortran and Gainslayer finally got Endless Space on his own, which is great. And we play a lot together. And let me tell you this, it is so exciting and so much fun, you have no idea. Each day we play a couple of hours at least having lots of fun, and during the free weekend we actually played, according to Steam anyway, 26 hours of this game. This should tell you something if you don't already own this game, because if you like Forex strategy games that are tune based with some real life elements, not real life, real time elements, then this is definitely a game for you, especially if you have a friend that you can play with. Now. Of course, it might ruin your friendship, <laughs> because, let's be honest, we do like backstabbing each other with Gaius Slayer. We love, we actually, we do this a lot. But, yeah, what should I go for? Well, I guess Iron Graphing. Now, I really am tempted to speed this up. It might actually be even more beneficial than waiting for my hero to arrive. But, then again, I need this hero. I need him badly. And also, Soon I will be able to colonize this medium Arctic, and it does have low gravity, which increase, which is a really nice anomaly to have. So yeah, I'm gonna wait for Hero, put him on Kran, and then I'll take care of Kran as much as possible, because it will be my main system for quite a while, I expect. Let us decrease the tax rate so my people are no longer unhappy. Wow. I had to decrease it by a lot, unfortunately, but that's... I had to do this, you know, I cannot possibly allow my people to be unhappy on my home system. Then again, I do need to have my hero as quickly as possible, so I'll deal with it for now. Plus 19 will allow me, plus 19 dust per turn will allow me to get my hero next turn, if my calculations are correct at least, so this is something at least. Okay then, let us end the turn, and think what the future might bring to us. Also, even though I do want to make this video as long as possible, because yet again, this 
first video of a series is usually the most watched one but I do not want to make it any longer than 40 maybe 50 minutes because longer than 40 minutes is not always fun to watch longer than 50 is a pain to encode so yeah and this is actually not an amoeba system in fact it's a really I wanted to say great system but then I had a look at so many gas giants that are here it is just sick so many gas giants wow I mean seriously and one is irradiated as well that's just classy anyway though late game when I get the ability to colonize gas giants it is going to be an amazing system because even though the gas giants are I'm sorry really difficult to colonize and they generate a lot of unhappiness as well but they also always provide you with a huge amount of something else. For example, helium gives you a ton of science, hydrogen gives you a ton of dust, and methane gives you a lot of industry, as you might expect from the name. So you really do need to ca take care of your gas giants as quickly as possible. Okay, you have to colonize them as quickly as possible. That, that's what I want to, to say, but just failed miserably, as I usually do. Now, is there anything that calls for my attention? Yes, a hero that I need to buy. So, welcome on board, Mr. Teriyaki. Teriyaki, are you Japanese? <laughs> and let us assign him to this system. Thank you very much. He will boost our production and our food production as well. Our industry production and food production, that's what I wanted to say. And that's about it. And as soon as we can, we will buy out the adding graphing. However, right now, what I need to do is decrease the tax rate so that my people are not unhappy on my home system. Because it is very important that they are not. Otherwise, your food and industry production is really, really decreased. We don't want this to happen. Also, I am considering starting my food production, aka pain production. But I don't quite have the tech to do this yet. And quite frankly, I don't have the industry for this either. But I do have access to titanium, so I should abuse it. So let us get advanced machining in the second next turn and completely annihilate the opponents. Also, I need xenology for additional dust just to be able to afford the upkeep of my ships. And that will tell you that they cost a lot of upkeep. Okay, I need to scratch my head in a place that is a little bit more difficult to access than you might think. But I did successfully scratch myself. Yay for the evolution! <laughs> anyway, let us continue moving forward with my scout. And there is the home system of the amoeba. And oh, I recognize the name. This is actually one of my most productive systems in the game that I'm playing against Gameslayer right now. So yeah. Amoeba started with Rich So. I'm pretty sure this is the faction trait. So I might be wrong about that. I don't think I am though. So, yeah, a really nice styling system, especially late game. And, oh, this is one of the new tracks, I love it. And, and sometimes, unfortunately, the tracks suddenly end and switch into another track, which is unfortunate, because the track you were about to hear but did not really reminds me a lot of Portal. And everything that reminds Portal, Bing's memories of Portal, rather, is a good thing. At least in my classy opinion. My classy opinion? What on earth was that supposed to mean? Whatever, whatever, don't even care. Okay, let us colonize this Arctic in the next turn. Or rather, the next, next turn. Actually, I could probably... No, I cannot speed this up. Oh, well. I can wait. I'm a patient guy. Not. But there isn't much I can do about it anyway, unfortunately. And as soon as I can, okay, as soon as I colonize this Arctic, I'll start some ship production. Because you definitely do realize by now, I need my offensive firepower right now. I mean, Amoebas are taking all the good systems, leaving the crappy ones to me. And if I want to survive, I need to fight right now. I mean, yes, since I am playing, playing a CFO, I would, have, I would have to fight anyway, but this instant pressure just forces me to do so even sooner. And please don't blockade my system with just one scout, thank you. <laughs> so you see, just ask nicely and people will listen to you. Anyway, wow, I actually got Two texts done at once. Can you say that text instead of two? I don't know pieces of the two technologies. Okay, that sounds nice. And now usually you would go for relativistic economics, but why would I go for it? I mean, yes, it does give me access to ceasefire and all matters of trade thingies, but I 
am supposed to kill people who will not talk with them or to them, so I'm not even gonna bother. Not at all. What I'm going to do instead is... Actually, this is interesting. I just noticed. Do they have the same... Hold on a second. I'm trying to see... No, never mind. For a second I thought that they have the same special technologies as, as the sowers do because I was getting the same stuff when I played as sowers, the same orange icons, but no, apparently they also they just have some similarities. Oh well, whatever. I'm getting distracted and sidetracked, so I guess I should stop. If it's efficient shielding, I need that for my destroyers who can carry more weapons, which in and of itself is fairly important, as you might guess. What I also need is... Core mining, maybe? It would give me access to geo-industrial plants, but I'm not sure if I have any plants that would benefit from that. I think I have at least one or two, though, so I might do that, just to be safe. And also, I would have access to Hyperium, which also would allow me to get lasers if I, of course, would be able to get Hyperium anywhere. Do keep in mind that we're playing on a galaxy setting with as few resources as possible, so getting Hyperium might be pretty difficult. Okay, this is the Alder Run system, and it's not a great system, not a bad one either. And where or where shall I send my scout? I cannot send him through the wormhole just yet, and there is a pirate over there who is going to kill my scout if I come anywhere near him. Then again, I can use the retreat battle card, so I'm gonna do this. Now the enemy is gonna attack, I'm gonna switch to manual and escape this battle as quickly as possible. And because the standing ship does, uh, the, the ship that you start with does have some very minor but still firepower and defensive capabilities, I don't think I'm going to lose my ship. Also, do keep in mind that since a patch long ago, the HP for all ships have been in really increased by a lot, so I should be able to survive the long weird phase, and after this phase, I'll no longer be here because I'll escape. Okay then, pirate. Pirates are moving in, and actually, this is our first battle. This calls for a celebration. And I have no juice. Son of a. Okay, then, I'll drink some water then. Be right back. Mm. This is a tasty water, by the way. Also, this sign right here reminds me of Korean alphabet so much. I mean, it almost. If not for this one bit to the right, it almost looks like Ko. Which is basically. Uh, the how to how to call it a part a syllab or whatever that you attach that you can attach to the end of your noun to make it connect to other noun when you want to create a more sophisticated sentence. For example, I eat chips and I drink cola. And so if you would want to say that in Korean, you would have to use the ko ko uh, thingy at the end of your first noun. Anyway. That's enough for Korean, let's go for my hero who has leveled up from this defeat because yes, your heroes do level up from defeats it's just, well gain experience rather it's just a lot less experience than they would get from a victory, obviously What I'm going to go for? Offense! Because I'm this kind of guy, I'm the kind of guy who kills people and murders them horribly on top of that what else am I going to go for? Well, I really want to go for Xenotron's agency, but I do need... Oh, I did not design an offensive ship yet. Oh, well, I don't have access to destroyers as well. Not yet, anyway. But I do need to start making a ship. Actually, you know what? I, maybe I can wait for two turns. And besides, I would have to wait for two turns anyway because anyway because I have to colonize this Arctic because I can really before I can really effectively pump out more ships. Also, as much as I hate to do this, I have to decrease my tax rate. And unfortunately, okay, this is bad. The only way for me to have my people not unhappy on my home planet is to decrease the tax rate to ten percent. And by this point, I lose dust. This is very bad. And the only way for me to counter that is for my hero to level up and achieve the Ministry of Propaganda trait. How long till that happens? A single turn! Okay, that is not too long. I can't wait for a single turn and lose 5 deaths without actually losing the game. Hopefully. The problem is, the pirates are coming and they are gonna head. Actually, the... Uh-oh. 
New galactic event. This is a big one. All factions endless signals tech discovered. Using the leftover endless technology and partially animated dust signaling systems were augmented around your home planet. This improved your detection range and extended your broadcast range, thus also extending your cultural influence. The lead scientist Fled set up a company called Spinmaster and has sold the tech to all factions. Kill him! <laughs> Actually, this doesn't make a lot of sense, not with my lore, because all of my people are just created to destroy and not really care about the tech. We just steal the tech. But oh well, it doesn't matter. Mere hero has leveled up, which is very important. I can give him Minister of Propaganda, and this way I can increase my tax rate so that I do not lose dust, which is extraordinarily important. Now, game event, if it was easy, it wouldn't be interesting, which basically just told me that I colonized my Arctic planet, which is good. My scouting ships are moving to some stuff, and unfortunately, problem is, I cannot move through Matraza, Mataraka, or what I'm supposed to call it, because it's under Amoeba sphere of influence. Now, the other way for me to counter that is to declare war. Unfortunately, declaring war is not necessarily the best idea when you have no ships. Also, as you can clearly notice, they are really angry because they just did colonize this tundra. S angry I am. But oh well, and OMG, this video cast is a long one. I don't care, I don't feel like ending just yet, and neither do you probably. So let's increase the deck rate as much as I possibly can without people going unhappy. Now I'm actually making dust, which is very, very, very important. And what else do I need to do? Wait one more turn, and my destroyers which will arrive. Also, I need to take off my systems because soon exploitation will be done, and I'll have to uh, I'll have to queue up heavy azotop refineries. So even though those those plants are improved, it is taking so long for them to do anything. But that's every day's laugh in every game for you. It's just gonna happen and you have to deal with it. Also, this system, I do need as much dust as possible because, as I said, fle fleets cost dust. And you need dust so that you do not go bankrupt because otherwise you'd have to scrap your fleets. Speaking of scrapping fleets, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to get to get past the uh, past the Paris again, hoping that this time I'll retreat to one of those two systems. If it is not the case, I'll just scrap my ship so that I do not have to pay for it. Now I know that watching this battle screen where nothing happens might not be the most exciting thing in the universe, but hey, it's not like there is much else I can do, and it is rather important for me to explore as much of the galaxy as quickly as possible, because there might still be some exploration events that have not been taken by the AI. That said, I have a feeling that might not be the case, because keep in mind, AI is playing at the highest difficulty level, they are probably doing really great by now, while I am still trying to get a decent food and industry production really difficult. Anyway, right now I'm trying to think if I would, if I were, if I'm able to say I eat pizza and I drink cola, cola in Korean. Well, I know I would not because I don't know how it's actually, yeah, I do know how it's pizza in Korean and cola. I guess it's just cola, I mean, I haven't heard of a f nation that calls cola differently than just cola because, you know, it's a, it's a cola, there isn't much to it, is it? Is there? So I guess I maybe could create a sentence like that. I might try it at the end of the video, <laughs> just to be cool. But anyway, this hero, what do I want? Tactician is an amazing ability. It is so useful. A minus 6% accuracy to enemy weapons might not sound great, but after years of experience, <laughs> yeah, right. You'd really see that this actually is a big deal. That said, I'm all about offense, and because of that, I'll go for a zillion too, so that I could get team spirit later on, which further increases my offense and also provides me with some additional defense, which is very nice. Engine driver is tempting, but I'll hold on to that just now. And I'll scrap this ship as soon as possible. I cannot scrap it while it's mid flight, unfortunately. It's still at FTL speed, I guess. And I cannot really communicate with it when it's this fast. Can I? Okay, is there anything else I should do this time? No, there is not really my time. I'm still making profits, so I can safely proceed to the next turn. 
Now, something interesting I wanted to say but was so rudely, rudely interrupted by the random event is the fact that in my previous game, I mean the game that I'm playing right now against Gainsay, there's this rather funny situation where one of my allies, the Horatio, and the Soas, which were not my allies, were completely dominated by pirates. I mean, the Pirate Empire had like five to six systems and it was pretty amazing to watch. I mean, seriously. They cannot, of course, have really their own empire because they cannot build upgrades on systems, but still, seeing so much black was kind of amazing, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, it looks like this forager is not going anywhere, so let us unassign this hero from this fleet because there is no need for him to be there, and let's scrap this sh ship because there is no need for me to keep wasting dust on it, is there now? Unfortunately, the enemy is also blockading one of my systems, which is very annoying because it is decreasing my science production to zero, and it is decreasing my dust production by 75%, a huge amount, a really huge one. But so far, I don't really have the ships to deal with, to deal with this thread, unless I design them, and I'm definitely gonna do so. So, how am I going to call this ship? I know how. It's a gift of death. <laughs> I'm so evil. Pathetically evil, but evil nevertheless. And what am I going to equip with you, you may ask? Well, you'd be pretty stupid and silly to not know what I'm going to go for. A lot of iron torpedoes and maybe a bunch of deflectors. Two? Okay, let's not go over the top. I do want to win, not just suicide my ships. So, 7 high of plating is kinda decent, it should allow me to survive for quite long, while 10 iron torpedoes are bound to take out any other ship in the air again. There is no way anything can survive this. And if it can, then it does not have the firepower to take out my ship, so it's all good in the neighborhood in the end. So, the gift has been designed, and I can start production of it, which is very important. But then again, I did forget about exploitation of this planet. So I'll go for exoscience stations, because in the future this planet will benefit from this exploitation greatly. And what I need to do is start gift production. Oh yeah. I do have some gifts to my enemy. <laughs> I'm such a pathetic person, am I not? Whatever. Everybody has his weakness, and my weakness is being bad at everything. Except maybe we were writing books. But other than that, yeah. Anyway, let's... Oh, this is nice. Amoebas are going to get wiped out by... Wow. Hold on a second. This is not nice. First of all, they should be attacked by... Okay, they were attacked by pirates and they won. Did they lose anything? I'm hovering over it. Yes! They lost almost every ship they had. They had three ships. Now they have one. <laughs> and it will take them 40... 34 turns to capture my crown system. Good luck, people. Good luck. Now, my research has been done. I discovered Hyperium somewhere, maybe, hopefully. Yes, on a colonized planet on Pixis, which is good. It means that I'll have access to Hyperium later on. So far, I have been very lucky, because usually when I play on low resources, I do never get Hyperium on Titanium, which is very difficult to deal with early game. And would be even more so, even right now, because I cannot do anything about it being at Eternal War, I cannot trade with my opponents. I mean, I can by abusing the ceasefire treaty, but I will not. Most likely, I will not. Hopefully, I will not, because I, if I will, then it means that something is going horribly wrong. Now, what kind of upgrade do I want to go for next? I'm kind of thinking right now. Botanical scanning might be useful because it would boost my food and happiness. And happiness is important. Then again, improved fleet management is also pretty nice. It will allow me to have more ships in a single fleet, which is always amazing. Also, more sp uh, less expansion as approval would be nice. Everything would be nice. Every game you have so much trouble deciding what, what tech to go for. Um... I'll go for pure scale accelerators, just so that my Arctic generates a little bit more uh, science production, and then I guess I will go for less expansion dis disapproval, because actually it's, this is overpopulation disapproval. No, it's expansion disapproval decrease. Which is good, because remember, endless mode 
increases your expansion as a problem by a lot. So you need to deal with it. Okay, I need to de decrease my tax rate so that my people are not unhappy. And I can simply proceed to the next turn. I can actually turn off my timer by now because this video is going to be longer than 50 minutes. So I'll have tons of progress in coding it anyway, so I might as well not care. Of course, I do need to wake up early tomorrow, so I guess I should actually care and finish this rather soon and quickly. But I love you guys so much and I want this video to be entertaining and long. And I already fa uh, failed at making it entertaining, so I at least wanna try it and make it long. <laughs> anyway, this system has finished production of something. Actually, it has all improvements already, which would not be possible if not for the fact that it is improved by my Craver's Affinity, which is great, and it also means that I can start doing this. Yes! Gifts! I have gifts for you, lots of gifts. And actually, Hyperium? Maybe in the future. Actually, I'm about to stagnate on the system, so yeah, I do need to colonize this Arid. So, cancel the gifts, colonize Arid, and make gifts after that. Thank you very much. See you later. Anything else to do? Uh, not much. I can and I will speed up this thingy though, because it is rather important that I finally get some more population on the crown. Right now, I'm just wasting my... Uh, what do you call it? In my racial affinity, whatever. The fact, the thing, the thing that increases your fits by 25%, I'm wasting it right now. But I don't want to, so I'm about to change that. Also, my hero, please, be in control of this fleet, and actually, I'm pretty sure I can win this fight easily, because my f ship is way more powerful. So, Amoebas, how about you defender dies? They only have a very small amount of kinetics and even less deflectors. There's no way in a billion, quadrillion years he's going to be able to resist my firepower. Now, the only thing I do care is for him not to deal too much damage, so I will go for magnetic field to mitigate the damage his kinetics might deal. After that, it doesn't really matter because I'll probably win after long great phase, but just in case, I will go for another repair systems. And yes, the enemy did go for weapon overclock. Which is good, because it means that I counter him, meaning his card has no effect whatsoever. My card has increased effect depending on what it says on the card. So in this case, my deflectors are even more efficient. Now they have increased efficiency by 50%. And I do as much beam damage as I always would. Which doesn't matter because I don't have any beams, but I was able to completely obliterate. And I mean annihilate, consume and destroy, devastate, kill, murder, and rape this defender. That's a lot of nouns in a single sentence, but I don't care. Also, this means that my r racial traits are coming into play already, because do keep in mind, I have dust recyclers and knowledge gathering, meaning I already gained some free dust and science from this battle. And this is actually, it might seem not a lot, because it's only 20... Science and Dust per battle, per enemy command point lost, but it is actually very, really a lot later on in the game when you just destroy enemy command points by like hundreds. It's amazing by then. Okay, should I go for Team Spirit or should I go for Azillion Free? Team Spirit would give me, well, it would give me just as much offense bonus, actually slightly less offense, but it will also give me defense. And it has a really nice icon, so I'll go for it, why not? <laughs> okay, yes, I know I want this bottle, it is kinda obvious I will, but oh well. Trash can, yes, I know it finished the production, I already used the ship that was produced over there. And I'll start moving towards Fudo and try and capture it. It is very nice by the uh, amoebas that they started colonizing those plants as well. This means that I'll have an easy job in using them in the future. Also, I hope they made as many improvements as humanly possible on those systems, because then I would be able... I will, I would not have to build them myself, which would be kinda nice, I'm not gonna lie. Am I recording, by the way? Yes, I am. Sorry. From time to time, I do get paranoid like that. Let's end the turn, drink a little bit more water. Mm. This water is great. And I just realized... I do have a meta and taco again, or whatever you're supposed to call it, on my home system. I have one other on Kran and two more on Antemis. And one more on Hidel, 
which is incredible. It means that if I control at least four of those at once, then I'm definitely going to have resource abundance, which means that... What does it give me, actually? It gives me a lot of happiness and dust on a particular planet, and if I have Monopoly or Abundance, then I'll have plus 40% ship defense on entire empire. Wow, that is a lot. I want it. I want it bad. But anyway, in the meantime, let's start sending my invaders towards Amoebas and capturing their systems. As you can see, I can start capturing them already, even though we're not technically at war, but we are at Cold War, which is a feature that is that allows players to engage in battles early on in the game when going to war officially would just not be really a smart thing to do. A very cool feature, that I believe, which makes this game even more superior to any civilization games or anything like that, in my opinion. Not like it really needs any more advantages over those games, because in my honest opinion, it is way, way better. So anyway, what I am gonna do, I already am thinking about it, is in decree is spinning up the construction of gifts. So I have one more and I just did that, did it, and this also means that now I will have three additional gifts next turn, which will allow me to capture Hildo so much more quickly. It is still going to take me 39 turns, but it's only with a single gift on this, uh, on this fleet. When I get more, it is the time necessary for me to capture this system is going to decrease by a lot. Also, I need, unfortunately, to decrease my tax rate, which means that I'm losing dust. So in the future, I'll have to raise it again, which I am not a big fan of, but it is, it's not like I can do a lot about it. What I can do is stop my gift production of pixies, because I don't really need too many gifts just yet, just now, for now, and I will just go for industry into dust conversion. It's not a lot of increased dust production, but it is a bit, and I believe I need it. Wait a second, I do have... OMG, I'm so stupid. I should go for coin exchange to give myself more dust this way, rather than just industry to dust uh, conversion. I mean, I can wait for one turn to get those two more gifts, but after that, I'll definitely need that. Uh, I mean, seriously. Okay then, I believe I'm good to go to end the turn. Let's have a quick look at the score, actually, because I'm kind of interested to see how people are doing. Now, this area in the game, score mainly reflects how much food everybody is producing, and it looks or how well they are expanding. So, Amoebas are at first place, uh, naturally, because I am at war with them. Not officially yet, but, yet, but I will be. And, of course, as annoying as it is, they are the most powerful faction. <laughs> this always happens, doesn't it? Oh well, I'm the second worst faction, but do keep in mind that this is also partially because I'm a custom faction, and the custom factions are designed to have a, to be a little bit weaker than the official factions. Now, I do have access to applied Casimir effect, which is nice, it decreases my disapproval, which I needed a lot. Now, what I will go for next? You know what? I think I will go for particle scanning just to get the improved fleet, ma fleet management so I can have even more destroyers in a single fleet, which would be devastating! And I mean it utterly devastating. I actually might also go for rel relativistic economics just so that I have access to Xenomine Neurology. And while this is why this is important, you may ask, just for this one, it, in it increases your lux luxury base fleet production you feeds bonus on every luxury resource you control, and I do control dust water, so I would get even more food and dust from having access to it, which is great. Also, I'm almost stagnated on the system, which is just nice to see. Which means that I actually might go like a Doombringer to stress a bit of this population to a system which needs more population, like right now. Okay, actually, this was kind of funny. My clicking did. Sync up with the music. I loved it. <laughs> anyway, let's keep sending my fleets in the general direction of Hido, which kinda sounds... Hido? Sounds a little bit French, doesn't it? Or maybe... Not French, but Spanish? I'm not sure. There's something about it. About this word. And also, you know what? I did not name my fleet. And you know how I'm gonna call it. Jensen. Because I do love this. Okay. Uh, okay, that's the research I did said uh, this, the call of distant constellations, that basically means that I do have the ability to go through wormholes, and I complete the construction of a bunch of gifts, which is very, very nice. In terms of fleet, I should be pretty powerful, 
Yeah, military power, I'm at the second place. In terms of command points, I'm at fifth, which means that my ships are very powerful, but I still do not have a lot of them. Which is good, it means that I should be able to dominate the enemy pretty easily, and wow, there is some kind of nebula passing by. <laughs> I noticed the, the purple on the screen. It's kind of cute, I love it. Okay, let's have a quick look at the dust. I'm losing dust, and my people are not too happy as well. That's not great. Not great at all. What I'm going to do is decrease the dust loss. Oh, this is not good. And make sure that my people are still content at my home system. I will have to increase my tax rate later on even further and my people will be unhappy, but I want to avoid this for as long as po I possibly can. For obvious reasons. Okay, now I believe I can proceed to the next turn. Amoebas are so DD dead, that's what they get for screwing with pancakes. No pancakes for them for breakfast. Okay, Power Ghost Cunning has finished, which I don't really care about. Yeah, whatever. And come on, it's just a. S okay, it looks like I'll have to send a fleet to in there. Just because Amoebas are being extraordinarily annoying. But oh well, what can I do? Trash can! Let's send a bunch of gi- Hey, Amoebas, I have gifts for you. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Not really, but let's pretend it was. Okay, let's switch to manual. And a really cool feature that, uh, that has been implemented into this game is that now you can choose not to have battle timers, meaning that you can take as long as you want before engaging in a battle, which finally allows me- n al this allows the AI to cheat and engage me in three battles at once so that I would have be forced into auto battle at least two of them, as it happened a lot in my previous playthroughs. Okay then, going for magnetic field again, that DME was able to counter, which is very very bad. It means that... <gasps> OMG, they have missiles! Houston, we have a problem. I'm going to lose a gift, no doubt about that. He's going to die as well. But a gift loss this early on is bad. I didn't like, expect Amoebas to be smart and go for missiles. Actually, it survived! It survived! Yes! Now I only wish I had gone for another persistence so that it would heal up a little bit. 6.8 HP left on the ship. Wow. The captain must be sweating like crazy right now. Well, the crew is like probably chanting some kind of prayers to the gods. Actually, never mind. I'm playing as robots that do not even think. They are just they just kill and they like killing, and that's all. So that probably didn't happen. Oh well. Okay, let's keep boosting this fleet. Six out of nine. I can still fit a bit, a little bit more gifts in there, which is nice. I'm also making more dust because of this industry to dust conversion, which is nice. This will allow me not to increase my tax rate. Very, very important. Also, I'm about to finish Cossack of Doombringer. Well, not about to finish. It is still going to take two turns. But at least I will not be stagnated for too long. Only one turn of stagnation. That is not too bad. Unfortunately, I do not have, I do not have a lot of dust, so I cannot really speed up a construction of anything. But, oh well, I'll have to deal with what I have. That's essentially this game of in a nutshell. You, oh, thank you. I did not set a research. I need to deal with that. So what shall I go for next? But I go scanning, I guess, just to have a little bit more happiness, so I can increase the tax rate. After that, I think actually, yeah, I need some kind of rocket defense because amoebas are playing smart, and I need to counter that. Oh yes, indeed I do. After that, what do you want to go for? Having nanobionic particles might be really great because this would allow me to harvest the meta entacogen, entactogen, or whatever you're supposed to call it, and I have access to it, so why not? Why not indeed? So yeah, I'll go for neural robotics to get weapon deception along the way, and then I'll go for nanobionic particles. Also, magnetic field generators, really powerful upgrade, especially early on. Or possibly on systems with just one planet or something like that. Okay, then let's end the 10. And this video cast is almost uh, 70 minutes long. Wow. That's a lot. Not 
huge, huge, not really all that, all that amazing because my past video guys have used to be longer sometimes, have been longer, whatever. I cannot speak English right now, but still, I am kind of amazed because it was supposed to be like 30 minutes cast, and I was supposed to go to sleep as well. But you know what? Why not? It is, after all, the first video in a series. I might as well put as much care and thought and love into it as I possibly can. As simple as that. Now, did I get my tech? I didn't notice the notification. Yes, I did. I have isotope fabrication. Very important. It will allow me to redesign my gifts a little bit. So get rid of two of the high isotope plating and get two offensive shafts. Now, this is not a lot. This will only allow me to dodge a just like maybe two missiles, maybe three, depends from the enemy missiles. Actually, this is the weakest defense, so I guess only two. But that's still two less missiles, and the enemy is bound to have just a few of them every game. And two missiles less might mean a gift survived, a gift saved, so I'll go for it. Okay, you just uh, you are guarding the system, and actually, why do I have them on guard duty? when I might as well start blockading this other system. Now, I wouldn't be able to conquer it, really, or maybe I would, but in, only in like Virginia tests, but at least blockading it will decrease the dust and the resource gain, I mean, and science gain the enemy best have from Artemis, which might be beneficial. So, yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Also, oh, MG, I'm still losing dust, why? At least it's only eight dust, so I can stay at this level for now, I guess. Yeah, I will deal with it. I will deal. Let's end the turn. And uh, seriously, okay. I'm going to finish drinking my water and then I'll play just a few more turns. Because I really, really do need to have some sleep and because tomorrow is going to be a busy day. I'm also going to have um, a mini surgery. It's not a real surgery. I'm not going to go. Uh, I'm not going to be. How do you call it? I will not be put asleep per se, but it is just going to be also a, a little bit more to that, so I guess I'll be tired tomorrow and stuff like that. Anyway, let's have a fight, you says, a Defender 6 and a bunch of Defender 5s, and they have missiles and beams. Okay. They have deflectors only, so they are all, all going to die from my gifts, but those beams and missiles... They worry me quite a lot, especially because there's no way for me to counter the beams at this point in time. So the only thing I could go for is either nano resistance to repair the damage, which I will not go for, or short circuit, and I'll opt to go for that. Hope for the best. Actually, next turn the enemy is going to be dead because he's got no rocket defense at all, and I was able to execute my short circuit, and now I have to pray the enemy miss uh, misses. As many B, as many lasers and rockets as humanly possible. Unfortunately, I already see a couple of good hits, and my gifts are taking damage. Come on, guys! I come to you with gifts, and that's how you repay me. Really, really rude. Like really. And boom! One gift goes down. Three defender goes down. Go down. One gift is also severely damaged, but overall, I did come out on top, which is nice. Okay then, Amibas, you put a valiant effort and you were completely crushed and dominated. How do you feel about that? Oh, you also leveled up my hero, thank you for that. Now, I could go for Tactician just to make sure that I have some kind of defense against those beam weapons. However, I do want to start going for Veteran as quickly as possible because, yeah. First of all, I would get a bunch of really nice upgrades, including the ground powder that I need right now, immediately, immediately, but also Veteran 4 gives you access to Cyber Skill, which gives you basically two free ability points, which is great, especially early on, so I will go for Veteran. Thank you very much. And, oh, like, why did I right-click that? Oh well. My hero has also leveled up, so I'm going to give him Mist of Propaganda 2, because he needs it, especially on a system with hell gods. Now people are ecstatic, that's nice to hear. And also, I have two more ships, one is a Doombringer, one is a Gift. Let us send Doombringer to Crown System, because it needs it more, I believe. So, Doombringer, go over there. And you know what, I'm actually going to use it to maybe colonize Arctic right now. I mean, yes, it would 
give me some unhappiness, but then again, low gravity is going to counter that 100%, so why not? Also, let us speed up the consecration of heavy, heavy isotope refineries, and yeah, do you see this? This is how much dust I was able to gain just from that single fight. Three command points, and I gained so much dust. This is huge. This is why I love those dust gatherers trait. No, dust searchers, dust something. I don't remember. You know what trait I'm talking about anyway, so that's the most important thing. And we'll try or go for sustainable farms or epigenetic crop seeding. Or maybe actually infinite supermarkets. Wow, never mind. I'll go for food. <laughs> <laughs> this system doesn't have a lot of industry at all. Okay, as for Faida system, it is almost done with heavy isotope refineries, and it is happy, surprisingly enough. So I will go for... Well, I'm about to colonize Arctic, so those people will not be happy anymore. And I'll get segmented in the next turn, so yeah, I do have to colonize this Arctic, and it's gonna take 7 turns, wow. Oh well, I have to deal with that. Also, I have somebody... Okay, this gift needs to be sent over here. Thank you very much. Yes, I know I want this bottle. I don't care about it. I mean, I do care. I'm thankful and stuff, but oh well. Also, no, I did not want to click on that. I wanted to move my population over to Pixis 4 because I believe it gives me more benefits than having people on high gravity large iron. Also, Definitely infinite supermarkets for the win. Am I losing or making dust? I'm losing and I'm actually losing a lot. I could increase the tax rate. I will do just that. And I'll increase it just by a little. I am hoping the amoebas will attack me again and that they will provide me with some extra dust this way. Okay then, let's end the turn. Actually, I could probably turn off my timer right now because there's no more... I have no more need for it, but... Well, why should I then? Actually, why should I? I lack listening to it. As simple as that. Okay, let's match all of my gifts together. Because I have, I bring a lot of gifts. It's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas. So it's just fitting that I bring my enemies a lot of gifts. And they have Adeons already with even more beams. Wow, those people know how to play the game. They really, really do. At least they're gonna give me a lot of dust. This is the most important thing, uh, thing of all, so... Yeah, I'm going to lose gifts, but I believe I have just a little bit more industry production than my opponents. Which means that I can afford to keep losing ships. My enemies, on the other hand, cannot. Also, I have a hero that keeps leveling, leveling up from those battles. They do not. So it's yet another reason, yet another reason why I should keep fighting and doing this as effectively as possible. Wow, they also have upgraded beams that no longer require Hyperion to use. This is huge! How much science production does Amiibus have? I'm starting to think that they might be at peace with Sophos or somebody like that and they are just training technologies with each other. Still, it doesn't really matter. I was able to completely obliterate their fleet and since they had no rockets, I was able to survive. Mostly, my gifts did suffer some damage. But all in all, I came out on top without even losing anybody, which is amazing, I don't need to tell you that. And it also means that I'll be able to capture the enemy system even faster. Actually, I just realized why I probably should end this video cast right now. I should end it just so that I can listen to it, listen how fast I am talking, and if I need to improve at all. Well, I most likely will, but I need to listen to it first so that I know where I'm standing, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that is actually yet another reason why I should probably end this video cast rather soon. That's just a scout, I don't care about scouts. It is blockading me, but that there is not really a lot I can do about it. Also, why not let's send some let's send some gifts to Artemis. And after ending this turn, I guess I'll end this particular video cast. It has been a long one. Oh yes, it has. Okay, trash can. That's there's nothing here I care about. And look at how much dust I have now. I can easily leave my tax rate at 30%, and I'll still have positive dust income per se just from this one battle, which is amazing. Okay, I believe this is it. Good enough for me. I'm really ramping up my score. I'm already third worst, which is way better than it was before. So I can end the turn, it's from my, say, my outro. It has been Pantros of the Mighty Mix Power. If you somehow managed to enjoy my, enjoy my video cast, then... Hold on! 
I cannot actually finish the video, this video cast just yet because I would lose all the notification after loading up a game and this is something big, I can see it already. What is it? Okay, it's one of those big events that all factions have. It's one of the coolest things as well. Unexpected an event, all factions seeking the origins, a great movement of peoples is putting together based on the rumor that a pilgrim scout discovered Thor, the fabled homeworld of the Endless, which is a lie, I guess. Whenever it is Thor or not, cannot be verified, but a vast Endless infrastructure seems to be waiting. So, I can either be selfish, spend a thousand dust to get one technology randomly discovered, or well, I'm gonna say no to that. I have no idea why, but I am. <laughs> I can be helpful, which would make me lose a thousand dust, but I would gain a lot of happiness. I don't have this much of that, this much dust. Or I could get a lot of happiness and a lot of population empire. Yes! OMG, yes! Yeah! Wow. This just made me think that there is no stopping. This is a sign of things to come. And things to come, let me tell you, are pain, misery, and suffering of our enemies. Actually, I need to get some barriers as soon as possible. But anyway, it has been Pantros of the Mighty Mix Spammer. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video, then please do like it. Maybe you're subscribed to my channel if you would like to see more. Also, please leave a comment because I do love reading them. They also help me by quite a lot. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you online. Chanun Pichegama ko kolagama shiyo. I just thought it would be cool to say I eat pizza and drink cola because in Korean. Because hey, why not? <laughs> see you later.